Hello and welcome to another edition of Community Forum. I am Joseph Feaster, the host of the program. And once again, we're gonna have a great program, an informative program for you. And in fact, the topic today is tips for a healthy marriage. And I have with me an expert who will share her cutting edge instincts on, uh, insight, excuse me, on marriage and tips for how to have and maintain a healthy marriage. My guest is a nationally renowned psychotherapist, marriage and family therapist, and relationship expert. She often appears on Fox News channels, sharing her insights on mental health topics. She has also appeared on Discovery, Lifetime, and later this summer will be appearing on MTV. She also has a regular segment on Fox News Boston called Ask Dr. Karen. She is the host, producer, and director of The Karen Show on Sharon Community TV. She is the founder and director of a mental health and wellness counseling practice in Sharon. And she has been counseling for over 20 years. She is an author of two books. My guests, as I've learned during our chats before and some of my readings about her, has a direct approach, a tell it like it is style. And I, uh, personally, I like that. So join me in welcoming Dr. Karen Ruskin. Karen, welcome to the sh uh, to Community Forum. Thank you. Happy to have you in here. Now, with that great introduction that I've just given. <laughs> Thank you for I'm, that. And I'm sure that's the one your mother wrote. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and I know how mothers are, so <laughs> therefore, but it, it's, it's a great segue into being able to tell us about, you know, exactly what what prompted you to go into the uh, you know the profession which you currently are engaged in? And just tell our, our viewing audience a little bit about you. Sure. Thanks so much for the great intro. And you know when I was listening to you say it, it it does sound so phenomenal on paper. And I, I thank you for that. And the fact is, for 20 plus years, I've worked really hard to get to where I am. And when you ask, well, how did you get here? What led you to become a marriage and family therapist? For as far back as I can remember in my childhood, I always, always loved to analyze specifically the relationship dynamic between people, between family members, parents and children, husbands and wives. I found the whole concept fascinating. And I was constantly talking with my friends and with my parents about different things that I saw and observed. I always felt as though I had solution ideas for relationship problems that were happening. So as I aged and went on into uh, my bachelor's program, I majored in psychology because yeah. uh, at, um, where did I go? SUNY Buffalo, I have to my God, it's been so long. Where did I go to school? <laughs> I'm aging myself here. Well, I didn't yes. ask you when. Oh, I, oh, I went, oh, no, I've learned that. I, yeah, I've been married 24 years. I don't ask that question. <laughs> yes, so I went to uh, the State University of New York at Buffalo. Right. Very common when you grow up in New York. You oh. Hey, hey, I'm a New Yorker. We're going to have a problem. You did? Where'd you grow up in Born New York? Born in the Bronx, raised in Queens, worked in Brooklyn, party oh. to Manhattan. I, oh my goodness, <laughs> I grew up in Queens also. Right. Whitestone, Queens. Where did you well, grow up? Well, I went uh, East Elmhurst. Oh. Okay. And used to go to Flushing, so I used to go right yes. to town right over from Whitestone, so I know exactly Absolutely. where you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. All so, right, see, we have kinsmanship right here. Yes, <laughs> we do. I love finding that out. Yeah. So, so, yeah, back in those days, I, I would love to analyze, and ultimately, when I went on uh, to college, I majored in psychology, knowing that I found the human mind fascinating, and then when I went onward, you know, to further education in my master's, um, I then determined uh, that marriage and family therapy was specifically the uh, degree that I wanted to have because it focuses on the relationship dynamic between people within the family unit rather than just an individual focus about the mind in terms of the person as an individual being a problem, rather the system, the whole system plays a part in who we are. So anyway, why I became a marriage and family therapist really is because I believe in marriage, I believe in family, I see the effects of a healthy family and a healthy marriage can have on you as an individual person, find it fascinating, and I believe that there are things you can do every day to help your marital relationship be all that it can be. And I always felt that way, so it led me really ultimately to do something that I had passion for. Um, and there you go, that's the quickie. Well, relationships, obviously, they're 
that's a nuclear one that you're referring to, but there's the broader relationship on your job in terms of dealing with people, uh, you know, in other social situations. But we're going to focus strictly upon in terms in the family relationship, the marriage relationship. I love what you just said yes. because there's a lot of people actually that don't realize that the relationship dynamic we have with our employer or the That's relationship right. we have with ourself or with our friends or all of these are relationships and you're right my expertise is absolutely our relationship with our community our relationship with our country our relationship with our world but yes yes yes, yes. we will we be have, focusing yes. on marriage today that's but right. yes but, but all of those and i wanted to put it in that context Thank that you. when you start talking about relationship and i'm sure your skill set to address those would be there as well it, it's there when you talk yeah. about any type of relationship, but the one we're going to talk about this nuclear one yes. in the sense of relationship between a man and a woman, and well, in terms of marital situation, because let me be uh, you know, politically correct, it can be we're talking about the relationship of marriage. Yes. So, but one of the things after doing this for 20 years mm -hmm. or plus, you know, after a while you're hearing all of these different stories and from all of the clients that you have counseled, et cetera, how do you? digest that, embody that, how does that work on you? Because again, you're hearing these relationship issues mm -hmm. and, um, and a multiplicity of them. Has that had an impact on, on, on you? Yeah, it's an interesting question. And what I'll share with you is that I'm a believer from my own personal professional experience that when you have a passion for something, you feel it, you live it, you breathe it, and it energizes you rather than depletes you from energy, you know? Oh, okay. So when I work with couples that are struggling in their marriage, rather than it having an impact on me where I feel drained, uh, I actually feel energized because I'm excited for the potential of where the couple can go. I know that there is the possibility that they can walk through my office at A and someday they can get to E or L or Z, A to Z. It's work, it's effort on the couple's part, but the potential is so exciting to me. Um, also, I find that when I work with couples, whatever stage and phase of marriage they're in, whether they're newlyweds whether they've been married for 30 something years. It is normal for couples to go through challenges and problems. And when they come into me, they're overwhelmed. They feel like this is, they're at their last, end of the last, their, their end of the rope, so to speak. And they're at their wits end and they can't even imagine often what can change to help things to be better. And I view myself as really the opportunity, an opportunity to help them to help themselves get to a better place. So quite frankly, I see my role as an honor working with couples and it's just, I, I love what I do and I believe that when we have found something in life that we love what we do, it doesn't drain us, it rather energizes us and I believe that that is in essence why it is that I feel so good about what I do to this day, you know? Well that's one, you know, it's interesting that you will say that because uh, I think the bottom line is if you like what you do and as you say feel passionate about what you do it doesn't n negate you it's a positive because you're working with persons you're trying to have them work through an issue and oftentimes you can get them to a result which can be a positive result but you've been practicing in Sharon for, period, for quite a long period of time because mm -hmm. you have your offices mm -hmm. there in Sharon but can you Give some descriptions of the types of issues that come before you so that our viewing audience can get a sense that if they are you know, experiencing these, you might be the right person for them to come to speak to. I'm a mediator, mm -hmm. and my role is not obviously not as licensed as yours is and, and probably the type of training, but what you want to do in a essence is get people to a win-win. And so therefore, could you talk about some of the uh, issues that might come before you? Absolutely. So when it comes to being a marriage therapist, there is a wide range of potential marital problems that will, be, that will come before you for many marriage therapists. So if I speak on behalf of myself, I'll say that it really ranges from communication problems in the relationship. There can be violence. There can be 
intimacy issues. And intimacy doesn't just mean sexual intimacy issues or physical intimacy issues. It could be emotional intimacy issues where you no longer feel connected with your spouse anymore and you want help to reconnect. Uh, marital problems sometimes are child-related where you're struggling to feel like a team, to feel like a partnership, to co-parent, and that there's a lot of arguments surrounding that. Marital issues can include where one person or both people has some type of um, a drug addiction or some other type of addiction um, or abuse of some sort. Marital issues could be that something has happened in somebody's past, some type of trauma, and that trauma is now affecting your ability to relate in a healthy way with your spouse. Marital issues could be that one of the spouses might be mentally ill or maybe there's a physical illness and how the spouse is coping and adjusting and how they're relating because of that. Or perhaps there's been a job loss and therefore how the couple is functioning. Or maybe there's been a death in the family, grief and loss. As you can see, when it comes to the marriage, this really is the core. It's right here. So anything that happens in your life, the marriage can either be chipped at or the marriage could feel strong and be able to come together and combat the challenges that come. Then within the couplehood, there are problems that happen in the relationship dynamic that can either embrace challenges that happen or drown. You can either survive or thrive in your marriage and even in your own individual self because of the things in your life that are happening. So that is just but a few uh, things, that, uh, situations, challenges and problems that couples can come in to my office with and to work with me and even other marriage therapists too, you know, but there are some marriage therapists that maybe only focus on, on one or two specific issues, but for me in particular, uh, any marital issue I am open to working on because my expertise is truly in the relationship dynamic between people, whatever the issue might be. So I hope this helps your viewers today. When they're sitting back and listening, they can say to themselves, you know what, I'm not alone. And if I'm struggling, there are marriage therapists out there that can help us with our problem. And we don't have to feel like we're the first person who's ever experienced this. And I hope they can also know that in my list that just on the top of my head, I named just but a few there are many others, and for them not to feel, oh, Dr. Karen Ruskin didn't mention my issue, does that mean that she doesn't help those issues, or does that mean that other marriage therapists doesn't help those issues? Absolutely not. That any marital problem, I hope <clears throat> that they could feel free to reach out to a marriage therapist and know that, um, that they would be embraced. And if that marriage therapist doesn't feel that they have an expertise or can work with that problem, we're a very open bunch, and we often know other therapists around town that we can refer them to. But how do we get past, most people do not want to talk about, yeah. divulge problems that they may be having. I mean, you know, it's, it's I, I would say clearly outside mm -hmm. of my area of expertise, but at least by my mature observations, people don't want to talk about their problems. They internalize them. They want to keep it to themselves. They don't want folks in their business. How do you get people out of that mindset to, to be able to say, okay, there's a problem. <laughs> If we want to make this work, we have to get into a position of talking about it. People fear counseling. Mm -hmm. Some people don't feel that counseling does anything for them. What would you say to that individual? Well, I'd say two things. First, I'm going to share what I would say, and the second, one of the things that I do in order to help people with that problem. So what would I say? What I would say is, if your marriage is important to you, then put on your big boy pants and pull up your big girl panties, people, because it's worth it to go get help. And the worst thing that can happen is you decide you're not going to go back to that therapist. It's not signed, sealed, and delivered that that's it. You have to stick with that therapist because you've been to that session one time. No, no, no. You can experiment. You could explore. So I would say to give it a go, to decide that your marriage is worth the time and the effort and the courage and the bravery to confront the problems, and to seek out help, not be afraid of it. You know, if our leg is broken, we seek out help, right? Maybe if our tooth hurts, we might wait a lot of months before we get help. But the fact is, we seek out help if it's something that we feel is outside of our wheelhouse. So, the marriage relationship is just but one example of something so important that can get damaged that often couples they're feeling lost. They feel like they've tried everything. So that is what I would say. It's worth it. Go get help. 
Okay, number two, how do I help couples or how do I see an idea of how couples could be helped who normally wouldn't go for counseling? Yes. Well, one of the things that I actually find very advantageous is the media. A program like this, you and I talking openly about, hey, people can go get marriage help if they need it. Uh, on my Twitter account, I provide mental health tips every day. Dr. Karen's tip of the day, you know, Dr. Karen's tip for the weekend. I include links to uh, television interviews or radio interviews or when I'm interviewed uh, for print media, whether magazines or newspapers. I write a blog on my website where I try and keep that up to date with marriage uh, information and parenting information and any other mental health information. So here, Facebook, you know, my Dr. Karen Ruskin, the relationship expert Facebook page. It, these days, there are so many avenues that therapists have an opportunity to touch the lives of people that normally would not walk into their office. That's why I do all of those things. Even the books that I've written, why, why? Because there's information that I help couples with in the, in the office and I say to myself, there are some people that may never step foot into the office. How can I touch their lives? So for the people who don't come into the office, whether it's a book, whether it's a blog article, print media, radio, TV, all of these are opportunities to open the mind, to think about, hmm, what's some tips I can use that this therapist shared? What's some insights that this doctor shared? What are some tips and tools that I can use? It helps them by reading and hearing this information. And what it also does is maybe, just maybe, open up the door that that person who normally wouldn't seek out help, that they read something and say, you know, I really identify with what that doctor said. They could live in another state, mind you, another country, mind you. I get emails from people from other states and other countries and they say, Dr. Karen, I read your blog article on whatever the topic was and they'll share it with me, the topic, and I'm always so thrilled to get these emails, let me tell I'm you. Sure. They let me know I really identified with this and it really helped me to realize that I'm not alone. And so I know the, these the genre of TV or of print media, whatever it might be, you can touch people's lives that normally wouldn't even come for help. You've mentioned the many ways with our uh, informational age in terms of reaching people. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to peel back for a moment <clears throat> to one because I'm trying to embody what the viewing audience is sitting out there thinking. Okay, and, and the first, and one of the things that I, and you know, it, uh, I, I believe I'm correct in. In this assessment, those who feel if I have to go to counseling, I failed. Mm. You know, I should be able okay. to be. You know, I should be able to work through this. You know, it, and I'm just peeling back because I know you've responded to that to some extent. But I want to hit the point right on the head. In terms, there are those who say, "If I'm not going to go to counseling, because that means I failed." If is is like those persons, I don't want to go to the doctor. Uh, you know, I can man up, woman up, I can take this pain and do it. And, uh, and, and, and obviously, at that, sometime at that point in time, things get worse. What do you say to that person who just says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a failure if I have to go to counseling, mm -hmm. uh, be it in terms of the marriage counseling, mental health counseling, whatever it is, what's, what would be the prescription or the advice that you would say to that particular individual and it may be what you've just related, but I'd like for you to, to hone in on that and see if you can give a response to the person out there who's yeah. thinking that way. You have failed yourself if you don't step up to the plate of life. That's it, plain and simple. You said earlier that you know that I'm direct and I tell it like it is, yes. and I will tell them like it is. Always, all the time, 24 seven, and that is the fact. If you don't step up to the plate, then there's no way you can ever hit a home run. If you let fear drive you, fear of failure or belief in failure, so that you don't take action, that is failure. When you step up and you seek out help, that's not failure, that's the opposite. That means you are taking ownership of what you can do today to help yourself to help yourself get to a better place. The moment we stop taking ownership of what I can do, that is when we failed. So whether it's about our marriage, whether it's about our own personal health and wellness, whether it's about our children, whatever the topic is, the moment we don't step up and seek out help if we need it, that is the failure. If we step up, that very moment we step up and we take ownership by seeking out help, 
we are a winner because we are stepping up to the plate of life. That's it. Well, and now I see why you are approached nationally to be on TV oh, and to thanks. be on different <laughs> programs and to Thank have you. your own program and your own blog and to write books. And we'll talk about some of your books as we go through the program. But I can, you know, and that's the directness that I like. When I was reading yeah. your, your material, they said, you're being direct. I'm the same way. Tell mm -hmm. it like it is. And, 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 and to do that. But let me expand it a little bit because I know you have your offices in, uh, in uh, Sharon. Yes. And I want to talk about, you know, let's talk about your practice. Let's talk about the number of people that you have there. What do they do, the different type of specialties? You know, let's, let's do a little bit of promo on your, your uh, therapist and wellness business. This is your opportunity. Oh, talk sure. to me about it. Okay, thanks, <laughs> Joe. Um, so I have a wonderful group. Dr. Karen Ruskin and Associates. Yes. And um, it's my group, as you said, in Sharon. So there's eight of us therapists at the present time. And all of us um, are skilled um, and caring and genuine. That's so important to me in a therapist. It cannot be that I would have somebody in the group who really doesn't genuinely care and isn't skilled. They must be skilled. So I have this wonderful team. Each therapist has their own specialty and unique way about them, their own style. Within their specialty, though, all of them are skilled at being able to understand, and they understand, the relationship dynamic between people. So all of the therapists provide family, individual, couples, children, and adult counseling. But as I said, they each have their own specialty. So some of them, their focus more is on children issues. Some of them, the focus is more on couples issues or adult individual issues. Um, and what I tried to really do my best at was on the website, provide a very clear bio on each therapist in the group. So that way when somebody is looking up the possibility of working with a therapist, they can read the bio and understand what is this particular therapist's expertise and what is their style, their approach. Because often what I discovered was that not many therapists have uh, on their website information about all of the therapists if they have a group. Usually I find that um, somebody who's the owner of a practice, they don't, they don't focus on each therapist as an individual. Instead, it's just the practice. And I believe that when you're searching for a therapist, it's not just about the practice, it's who are these therapists as individuals? Who are the specialists? Yeah, right. And, yes. and, and sometimes people even feel more comfortable knowing what that therapist looks like. So I make it a point where I keep the website up to date, which each, each therapist photo with their bio about their style, a bio about what their expertise is, and then of course, you know, meeting the therapist, um, you learn more about them, but I find that very helpful. So. Dr. Karen Ruskin and Associates, that's the group. Why don't you give the website? I know we're going to have all this information. Okay. But I want us to I want you to tell them here, give them the address, give them the website. We're going to have that come up. Okay. But if you would. Thank you. So drkarenruskin.com, www.drkarenruskin.com. And on that website, um, what's really fun is I talk about what our uh, practices philosophy is and mission is. You see, for many years I worked on my own and my uh, philosophy has been all about providing real solutions for real life problems and really helping people to help themselves get to a better place. That's my whole everything, how I view problems and mm -hmm. solutions and helping people. So um, I decided a number of years ago uh, to expand instead of just working on my own because I, I would feel so bad quite frankly, when uh, I'd be full. If, I, if, my pra if my practice was full and a client contacted me and said, oh, you know, I've heard such great things about you. Can I please get in? And there just wasn't enough hours in a day. So the long and short of it is I decided to expand. And over time, as there were different therapists that I would meet that I felt were really wonderful and a, and a great fit for the philosophy uh, that I, I, I practice by and would be a good fit for our community. Over time, I would expand more and more and more till now there's you know our current group as it stands of eight. And uh, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm blessed. I have a wonderful team and I know that they feel really blessed to be part of a group to be able to help so many people. Yeah. You're a great communicator. 
Thanks. <laughs> uh, that's evidenced by your, the request for you, as I stated earlier, to appear on various TV programs, be it Lifetime, Discovery, going to be doing your MTV Mm -hmm. uh, stint uh, sometime this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your blog, you have your Twitter, you have your Facebook, uh, but you're also an accomplished author having written two books and one of, you know, and so I like to talk about both of those as well, but I know we want to talk about the one which is displayed here, Dr. Karen's Marriage Manual. Yeah. And so, you know, why don't, you, why don't we uh, at least give uh, folks a snippet of the book, of course, I don't want to give them all of it, not on this show, I want them to buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say it for you. I just want uh -huh. them to, I want you to tease them, entice them okay. into re reason why they should uh, buy this book. So tell us about the book and you know some of what's in it. Sure, well, my, my goal in writing the book was to offer people the opportunity to read what they would want to know and need to know at any phase and stage of marriage from a person who's been a marriage therapist for 20 plus years. What are all the patterns that I have seen? What are all the uh, tips that I can give to them? Uh, what are the main problems that couples come in for counseling for? What are some of the top questions that couples ask? What are some of the uh, typical challenges. Um, so what I did was I, I put together Dr. Karen's marriage manual and I share in alphabetical order A through Z uh, marriage don'ts and then A through Z the top marriage do's. So <laughs> in essence ultimately it's really about um, giving them all the information they need to know in this one book. Um, I'm a believer that there are practical tips you could do if you just know the answers, if somebody just said to you, this is what you need to do. And so what I tried my best was to put together those tips that people can really take something away from. Um, what I've loved is both men and women share with me, they feel like it's an easy read, it's practical, and that um, they feel like I'm talking to them. Questions like, why? is it that couples do not seem to have the same level of intimacy desires? Why is it that over time in marriage, intimacy declines? What is it that I can do if my marriage is struggling in communication? What is it that I can do if I feel like uh, my spouse has cheated? Or how can I prevent cheating from happening? So from a to Z, what are all the main issues? And, and my goal was to put it all in there, and, and, and that's what I feel that I did. And from the feedback that I get, that is indeed what I did. Okay, well, I'm gonna probe a little bit more. Probe. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use my, my, my lawyer tactics. I wanna go and oh I wanna probe a, little, <laughs> probe a little bit more. I wanna okay, have us, go for uh, it. you know, can you give us a few of the do's and don'ts? Sure, okay, so if, let's just go in order for a moment, A, Let's start with A, attention. A marriage do, it's so important to give your spouse attention. It sounds really basic, but I will tell you that it is so common for couples to get lost in the day-to-day, -day, in what I refer to as the business partnership of the marriage. You often lose the passionate part of the marriage. You're just focused on the business aspect of the marriage what kid has to go to this activity, where and when, what are your responsibilities and chores of the day and so forth. So A, attention. Um, marriage don't. A, addiction. I talk about the powerful negative impact addiction has and a lot of people don't view themselves as addicted, whether it's addicted to gambling or addicted to drugs or addicted to the internet or addicted to porn, whatever the addiction is, they feel, no, no, this is just my escape method. It's in a healthy way. It's okay It's sometimes, or I'm just doing this for fun. But the fact is any type of addiction destroys the marriage. So here's what I'm gonna do for fun. Now that I went into one mm -hmm. at a time, A, Let's do this. Let's look through really quick. All right, everybody, you ready? All right, get your pens and pencils your, out. <laughs> that's right, because you're gonna get some free scoop. Okay, so great ways to destroy your marriage, right? So, 
A, abuse, alcohol and drugs. And mind you, under each one of them, I explain it, I explain what I mean, and I give concrete tips how to get out of this pattern if you're having a problem. Dr. Karen's advice is under every one of these. Abuse, alcohol and drugs, uh, let's just scroll, uh, blame, oh my gosh, the blame game. Point your finger, you're the one to blame for this problem, not me, so you're the one who has to make a change. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I talked before about the importance of taking ownership of what I can do today to help this relationship get to a better place. That's right. Ah, uh, yeah. Being blind to what's going on. People live blindly in their marriage. Bully, I talk about, don't be a bully in your marriage. Okay, now this is just B, A to B. This goes on all the way to Z. Those are just a few great ways to destroy your marriage. And again, we talk about what that means, what it looks like, and what's my advice. That's how it's broken down. And then there's a lovely little assignment of, you know, how to work on things. A lovely little chart. All right, a little chart. <laughs> little chart, a little chart. And then, of course, the 40 uh. ways to have a happy, lasting marriage. And I talk about from A to Z also. The attention we talked about. We talk about compassion, confronting. Um, I even talk about helping your marriage by making your spouse's life easier. When you shift to A, B, C, D, E, easier. What have you done today to help your spouse to feel like their life is easier? Anyway, A through Z, you can keep reading on. Yes. Your going through that just prompted for me something Ooh, which seems what? to be, and, and, and maybe this will be another aspect of your, or you may already do it, of your practice. It seems to me that new, uh, persons contemplating marriage need to read your book to find out the realities of what marriage is about. Because I think there is this you know, euphoria that exists out there, mm -hmm. this misconception that there's just continuous and forever bliss. That's not what marriage is about. And I think that part of the problem which is created in marriage is because people have gone into it with the misunderstanding of what it's yeah. about. Am, am I on point that that's you, a... You are so on point, Joe, and so analytical. I, I, yes, 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 yeah. everything you've just said. And I will tell you that um, when I work with young women and young men that come to see me as individuals because they're struggling in their relationship issues, you know, they're 20-somethings, and I'm helping them with their journey, they share with me that I should never have called the book Dr. Karen's Marriage Manual. <laughs> I should have called the book Dr. Karen's Relationship <laughs> Manual because they say that all of the tips and the tools and the concepts and the techniques, it's all about the relationship at any phase and stage, whether you're dating, because it's yes. all about how to treat somebody. And yes, as you said, the realities of what marriage is. Marriage, oh my goodness, the myth of marriage. Every day is bliss, it's going to be easy. And if it's work, then you marry the wrong person. Eh, wrong. Marriage is work, marriage takes effort, and you have to put effort into the marriage if you want it to grow, if you want it to blossom. So indeed, I have people who buy the book as a uh, wedding gift. I've had people who say that yeah. I give it to people, you know, they're getting married and they need to read this book too. So absolutely. Well, you need to give it to the page. rabbi. You need to give it and turn it to the minister. All of these things. The reason why I'm saying yeah, that is yeah. what you're talking about, and, and we're, we're going to probe a little bit more into a more broaden, broaden the conversation okay. beyond marriage relationship. But I think that the, the idea, and I'm just going to propose to you, recast the book. Change it to the relationship manual. <laughs> 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 we cast the book uh -huh. and put it in the relationship manual. And before we move into the broader areas of relationships, how can one attain a copy of the book? Absolutely. Well, if they would like an autographed copy of the oh, book. Oh, my goodness. Woo! I hope I get one. You, oh, would you like one? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what I'm going to do when our sh when this show ends, I'm going to give you a little autographed copy, and you're going to keep oh this one and take goodness, it home. Oh my goodness, it turns am I am, am I blushing? You are blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask Roy. And your wife's going to love this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, the way they anybody can get the book is why don't they go to my website, drkarenruskin.com. Uh, because then they can order it straight from there and I can uh, provide an autographed copy. And there's even a spot on the website that if you want a specialized message, you can fill that out on my website that you'd like a specialized message and tell me what it is. And I'm happy to make a specialized message. Well, so, I'm going yeah. to take your information. I have an email group that I uh, uh, communicate with and I'm going to put that out there because I think what you're saying today Thank is you. so important I agree. to people in relating it all and now I'm going to segue into to broaden it. We said we would speak narrowly about a particular in terms of the nuclear 
one. And mm -hmm. while that terminology is not totally accurate, because nuclear could be a family, a family, Indeed, a total family. Sure. But I, I'm using it in, 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 in the concept of just was the, the persons who were married. Yes. But we're going to go broader because you also have a book that deals with children. Mm -hmm. And many of our viewing audience have children. So let's talk about it and broaden it to relating to the broader family. It could be sister, brother, uh, you know, cousin, uh, you mm -hmm. know, et cetera. It could be children. It could be on the job. As we said early on, we were chatting about these. I would suspect that your practice, as well as some of your writing, some of your blogging, address those issues as well. Let's talk about that a little bit. Oh, yes. Um, oh, parenting. So to be a parent is such a blessing. You know, I, I feel really blessed, my husband and I, um, that we were able to receive the gift of being able to conceive a child. And there are people out there who they struggle and they don't have children and they wish they did. And so anybody who does have a child out there, it's, it's such a blessing. And I feel like far too often parents feel really overwhelmed in parenting responsibilities and that's nothing to be ashamed of parenting is difficult at times very difficult absolutely and i'm a believer that how we are as parents has everything to do with not only the mental health and wellness of our children in terms of how they feel in the now today but who they become long term our children are a Affected by how we parent. So um, uh, my parenting book, The Nine Key Techniques uh, you know, for Raising Children, and I, I wrote in here for Raising Respectful Children Who Make Responsible Choices, I believe my whole philosophy in parenting is about if you treat your children as valued, equally valued, just as valued as you value yourself and you value your spouse, that they will value themselves in turn. Therefore, they will make responsible choices in their life. They will be respectful to themselves and respectful to others. So they will achieve, they will have high sense of self-worth. They will have empathy and compassion for others and good character. Why? Because you as a parent have treated them with respect because you treat them of value. A key technique in here I talk about of the nine techniques, one of them is all about hearing the voice of your child. That doesn't mean you always obey your child. Sometimes you disagree with their opinion. But to hear their voice means to say to them, thank you for taking the time to share with me your opinion. What do you feel? Wanting to know what your kids feel and respecting that voice, hearing that voice, because the moment you poo-poo what they say, the moment you ignore what they say or how they feel, they feel like this. And a child who feels like this will either act like this in life or they'll act like this in life in order to go from here to here. Right. But if instead they feel valued, they will feel good about themselves and they will have healthy relationships with others. So the book, the parenting book, I had written um, based upon a parenting workshop that I had done for many years and that I help my par the parents that I work with in the office about what are the key strategies to have a family that functions in a healthy way and to have healthy functioning kids. And mind you, um, the marriage book as well was uh, also, um, um, you know, as I mentioned before, based upon years worth of experience. Uh, but in our discussion right now about um, the parenting book, this was written really based upon a workshop that I provided for years. And I thought to myself, you know, there's only so many lives I can touch in workshops and in my office. There are people out there that perhaps wouldn't go for counseling or aren't going for counseling, but they'd read a book. You know, they'd cozy up at night and, you know, they'd look, ooh, what's a technique I could use? Wow, I can implement this one. This is really practical. This is doable. I will tell you, though, it has to be consistent. My parenting philosophy of raising your children of value and the nine key techniques is a whole philosophy and a reality of practical ways so that way you feel like you have a grounding of a parent as a parent and your kids feel 
great about who they are and special and loved and understood and they're, they're, they're practical, they're workable. Can one also obtain this book on your website? Absolutely, drkarenreskin.com. Okay. Either book is on there. Happy to sign it and autograph at any time. And you know, if 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 people you know forget the website, drkarenreskin.com. You know, it's my name anyway. They come by uh, your office. I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, make an appointment, Wait a please. Oh, 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 let uh, me not start which, anything. Which also, yes, yeah. making an appointment is also on the website. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my phone number's on there. My email's on the website, and there's even a page in order to click on if you want to. Uh, submit to become a client on the website but point is yes absolutely the books can be ordered on the website and you know if people follow me on Twitter uh, you know at Dr. Karen Ruskin or Facebook Dr. Karen Ruskin the relationship expert often I will take excerpts out from um, my books from time to time to say hey tip of the day and I'll post it on mm -hmm. uh, Facebook or on Twitter um, as well but really uh, it it's all from the heart, to be frank with you. I'm just going to make an observation before I go to break to, uh, to uh, speak about our great sponsors of this program. An observation that I've made just by listening to you is everything that you have stated and everything that you have written in the book has applicability beyond just either marriage or parenting. Relationships on the job, mm -hmm. relationships with siblings, relationships uh, with uh, friends, it seems to me that the advice that you have in these books are just not limited to those topical areas. It's talking about how you deal with people and how yes. you deal with others. And it seems to me that it's a broader scope and a broader utility. One could read these books, even though they're entitled a particular way, mm -hmm. but they have broader utility. Thank you, Joe. I, I, love, I love your observation and, yeah. and you're, you're, you're right on there. You know, it's interesting because in writing a book, I found that I had to be very focused in what the title is and what the focus is in order for people who have a specific need. You know, parenting, okay, they go to the parenting book, marriage, they go to a marriage book, but you're right, it absolutely has a broader focus and um, what I often hear from clients or from people who are not my clients, um, from people who I don't know who have ordered the book, they'll email me and they'll share with me how whether it's the parenting book or the marriage book, how it's affected them in a global way, how they find that they've implemented the relationship dynamic tips that I've provided in other avenues and other contexts of their life. So thank you for that and, and, and absolutely. And one of the things that I've been working on, I'll, I'll share with you, oh, and obviously your viewers too. <laughs> I'd love to have the viewers <laughs> be informed. Yes, <laughs> um, what I've been working on uh -huh. um, for my next book, and I'm thinking it will be a smaller one, almost like a, like a handbook, a packet, is mental health tips. Um, because I, I very often, if exactly what you're saying, I find myself giving advice that is global. It could be for marriage, it could be for parenting, it could be your work environment, it could be with your relationship with yourself. So on Twitter and on Facebook, when I say Dr. Karen's mental health tip and I give a tip, I, it's broad. Sometimes it's about the marriage, sometimes it's about parenting, but sometimes it's about everything. Like for an example, a Dr. Karen mental health tip on any given day, it could say something like I just shared with you a little while ago, take ownership today of what you can do to help yourself get to a better place. Or a Dr. Karen's mental health tip of the day could be something like, be sure to be mindful of sharing with the person that you care about, that you care about them, that you value them. That could be anybody. It could be your boss. I value this job. It could be your kid, whatever. So I'm working on now putting that together in all of those tips that I've been sharing um, in a book form. So that way there can be a gl more globally read concept of Every day, if I do one of these tips, I can have a better life. I can take action today. What's the action I can take? Hmm, let me see. Dr. Karen says, today, this is what I should do. Bam, today, this is what I'm gonna do. Next day, something else. Next day, something else. Could you imagine if for seven days, once a day, you do one thing, one mental health tip, what are you gonna feel like after a week? How about two weeks? So, you know, 14 days in 14 ways, or 30 ways in 30 days, that type of concept. So that's what I'm working right now on. Well, I'm going to look forward to that because mental health is very important to me uh, because of personal experiences in terms of family. So we'll hold that thought, uh, but I also want you to think about if we have time when I return from uh, our sponsors is folks say, well, you know, 
Dr. Ruskin is married. Does she practice what she preach? Bum, bum, bum. And we're going to talk about that <laughs> when we come back. Dr. Karen Ruskin, my guest today, is a psychotherapist, marriage and family therapist, author of Dr. Karen's Marriage Manual and Nine Key Techniques for Raising Children. And as we discussed on the program, uh, it, uh, those tips uh, go beyond just those particular relationship, marriage and raising children. But you can find out more about her and also purchase the, her book at www.drkarenruskin.com. You can follow her on Twitter at Dr. Karen Ruskin. And I also know she's on Facebook, so definitely check her out. Support Our Library Association, Inc., or SOLA, is located at 84 Park Street, Stoughton, Mass., which is at the library. And you can get uh, contact them by email at solastoughton at gmail.com or by phone at 781-341-0856. Samaritans. I had them as a guest on uh, this program, and uh, it certainly is an issue where if you are having a, issues with one who is contemplating suicide or needs some assistance, please get contact the Samaritans uh, on their behalf or ask the person to do so. They're located in Boston at 41 West Street on the fourth floor. They can be reached by telephone at 617-536-2460. They have a 24-hour helpline which is 877-870-4673, or it's 870-HOPE. And uh, Samaritans, that's a line for teens, 800-252-TEEN, which is 8336. That's 800-252-8336. Or you can contact them on the website at www.samaritanshope.org. Kids Day 2014. It's going to be on June 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Stoughton High School. It's, it's going to be wet, wild, and wonderful. Again, we have carnival and fireworks on July 3rd from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Stoughton High School. So going out for July 4th. July 4th parade uh, lineup at 1 p.m. at Park Street, uh, Park and Prospect Streets. The kickoff is at 2 p.m. at Park Street to Washington Street will be the parade to the DPW. If you want more information, you can contact them at 781-436-0323 or by email at stoughtoncommunityevents.org. The crew would like to thank Maxie's Delicatessen. Mm, mm, mm. And they're located at 117 Sharon Street in Stoughton. They can be reached for, to place your orders at 781-341-1662. And I really want to thank them because they always are supportive of by sending uh, food over for, uh, for the host and for the program people and our guests here on Community Forum. So thank you, Maxis. American Cancer Society is looking for volunteers to drive cancer patients to and from treatment. So if you have time to volunteer, have a vehicle, assist in this effort, Contact the American Cancer Society at 1-800-ACS-6662 or check out their website at www.cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry in St. Anthony's Free Market is located at 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. And if you want more information, please call Christine Gallagher at 781-341-0611 or 781-341-0549. Meals on Wheels can also use your assistance in uh, delivering meals to our homebound citizens. So ask for Jessica if you can be helpful or and give her a call at 781-344-8882, extension 2. Stoughton Penny Saver, our business is advertising your business. They would like you to give them a call and place your ads. You can reach them at 781 344 4833 or stop by their offices at 27 Rose Glen Street right here in Stoughton. International Forum Show. We interview guests with local roots throughout the world via Skype and the program airs on Sundays from 8 at 8.30 p.m., Mondays at 11 p.m., Wednesdays at 9 a.m., Thursday at 9.30 p.m., Saturday at 12 noon on Comcast Channel 9 or Verizon Channel 28. If you have some thoughts or suggestions about the programming, please uh, send us an email at international.forum at yahoo.com or call 
Roy Cohen at 781-760-6991. Stoughton's Farmer Market. It's already started, folks, so hopefully you've been out there already in order to see the great foods and other items that are presented uh, at our uh, Stoughton Farmer's Market. They're located now at the First Paris Universalist Church right there in Stoughton Center, 790 Washington Street. It started last Saturday and it'll be uh, until uh, October 25th, rain or shine. It's Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's nonprofit, it's volunteer run, uh, and they've already have commitments from uh, institutions or entities such as Lane Gardens Farm, O'Brien's Bakery, Fresh Cat Seafood, and much more. Live music is uh, there as well, so come on out, support our farmer's market, and have a great time. Huh, my favorite program, Community Forum. Community Forum Showtimes in Stoughton. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m., Mondays at 8 p.m., Tuesdays at 5 p.m. on Comcast Channel 9 or Verizon Channel 28. If you have any comments or suggestions, you can contact us at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Community Forum also airs in Eastern, Mondays at 9 p.m., Tuesdays at 8 a.m., Wednesdays at 3 p.m., Saturday at 10 a.m. on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 22, and once again, if you want to have any comments and suggestions about programming, contact us by email at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Well, folks, we are back. And as I, uh, at, at the, when I went to introduce our uh, sponsors, I posed a question to Dr. Ruskin, which was, okay, you have advice for everybody else. You're married. You have children. Do you follow your own advice? So now we're about to get the answer. <laughs> My clients <laughs> ask me that a lot. And uh, what, what I'll tell you is this. I am a big believer in all the things that I, that I preach. I practice what I preach because I wouldn't be preaching it if I didn't believe in it. And so the answer is yes, absolutely. The insights, the concepts, the strategies that I share, they are very practical and workable, and I find myself when and as needed, I use them naturally. It's just a part of who I am. You know, it's interesting when, when you're at work, there's this, this blend of who you are in your private life and who you are at work, meaning the strategies that I provide at work and then how I live my real life. Do they merge or am I two separate people? The answer is I'm not two separate people. I am who I am and absolutely. So, yeah, that's it. What else you got for me? Throw me some more oh, questions. Oh, what well, else you got? Well, I'm going to be easy now. You know, oh, okay. turns that they tell me, Roy always tells me, come on, Joe, be nice to our guests. We want oh. them to return. So I try <laughs> to make sure that I, you know, epitomize that. I want to make sure Community Forum stays a program that folks want to watch. And that's why we have informative guests just like you. Thank you. You've been in the business, been a counselor since, and a therapist since, a psychotherapist since 1993. Have the types of issues over that span of time changed? So I have discovered that since 1993, although many of the key themes and issues and problems have stayed the same, it's the way in which we as a culture view the problems and sometimes how we view the solutions which has changed. For an example, the theme of relationships being at times a problem, that's remained, right? People still come for relationship problems. but how that has transformed is for an example years ago back when i started there was no social media so an example of how it's transformed is that social media has become a vessel of which certain problems that were already existing for an example cheating now for social media is a vessel in order to uh, provide further opportunities for people to cheat you see so cheating was always a problem but now with social media, there's emotional cheating that happens because you can find people from your past via Facebook, for an example. This is just but one example of the answer to the question, which is problems are still what they were, but there is a bit of transformation in terms of what it looks like 
how it's expanded, and how we view them. Even our view of what a family looks like. Years ago, family relationship dynamics, divorce wasn't as acceptable. Uh, whereas these days, even though it's not the desire to get a divorce, the goal is to have a healthy functioning family, the way in which it's viewed is not as through the negative lens as it was years ago. Still not viewed positively, of course, our goal is to have a family unit, but it's changed and, it's, and there's more divorces now than there were in 1993. So again, the problem, to answer the question again, the problems are what they were, but they have changed and transformed a bit in terms of how we view them because of our times have changed. Um, and in terms of how we treat them, as a therapist, things have changed a little bit because insurances have changed in terms of what types of problems people can come for help for or can't. The fact that sometimes, you know, in certain insurances that people would normally <coughs> come for help for that they might not be able to because of increased deductibles and co-pays and so forth. Um, and then even the use of being able to use, as we were talking about before, Twitter and Facebook and blogs, uh, that is an opportunity to provide therapeutic information, but you're not people's therapists, you see, when you're providing this information, but yet you're providing information. So that's changed a bit, because years ago it was much more difficult to access that type of information. Yep. Well, our time is, I mean, when you're having fun, Yeah. Things seem, the time seems to just take on its own course and evaporate, and we're almost near the end of the hour. But I'm going to give you an opportunity. What is the number one takeaway mm -hmm. which you would want to leave with our viewing audience? We've talked about a number of issues. We've talked about marriage. we talked about parenting. we talked about expanding it because the relationships can go beyond that that those nuclear types of relationships. What's the number one takeaway that you would want our viewing audience to, uh, to take away from this show? The number one takeaway is to water the plant of marriage, of any relationship. Water the plant of your relationship with your kids. Water the plant of your marriage. Water the plant of your own mental health and wellness. Water the plant of your relationship dynamics. Water the plant of your physical self. If you water the plant, it will grow. If you do not nurture whatever the plant is, it will not grow. So number one takeaway, water the plant. Because if you do not take the time to make the time for your marriage or any relationship, Versus. Well, I'm going to take that metaphor and use it to end the program. I want to help our viewing audience has found this to be informative. Dr. Karen Ruskin, thank you so much for joining us today. You are thank welcome. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for your publications. I'm encouraging mm -hmm. folks to definitely purchase uh, Dr. Ruskin's books. Go look at her blog. Go on Facebook. Go on Twitter. She definitely knows what she's doing and can be helpful to you. So enjoy the day. Dr. Ruskin, once again, thank you. My pleasure. All right, rock and roll. Yeah. I got to...